Hey, it's Zara. In this video, we'll be talking about gradient descent. Now that we understand convexity from my last video, let's move on to how we can actually find the point where the gradient is zero. One approach would involve solving a system of equations directly. This works well for simple linear problems, but it becomes impractical for complex nonlinear problems or when dealing with large data sets. This brings us to gradient descent, which is a powerful iterative optimization algorithm. The basic idea of vanilla or standard gradient descent is simple. We start with an arbitrary set of parameters, w, and iteratively update them in the direction that decreases the loss function until we reach a minimum. In gradient descent, we move from one point to another by taking small steps in the direction opposite to the gradient, where the gradient represents the steepest ascent in the loss function. So by going in the opposite direction, we reduce the loss. This process is repeated until we converge to a point where the gradient is zero, which is the minimum. Let's visualize this process. Imagine we have a loss function that depends on two variables, w1 and w2. This function has a bowl shape, meaning it has a single global minimum. On one side, we can look at the 3D plot of the function where w1 and w2 are on the horizontal axes and the function value is on the vertical axis. On this side, we can look at the contour plot, which shows lines connecting points of equal function value, similar to an elevation contours on a topographic map. The general idea of gradient descent is to start at some arbitrary point in the space w1, w2, then iteratively move in the direction that reduces the function's value. In each step, we move closer to the center of the bowl, which is the local minimum, which also happens to be the global minimum since our function is convex. We can also write this equation as follows, where nabla f of wt is the gradient of the loss function at wt, and alpha is the step size. The step size is also known as the learning rate. In other words, we can take the current value of w and compute the gradient at that point and move in the direction opposite to the gradient. And the size of the step is controlled by alpha. We continue updating w until the gradient is close enough to zero or changes in w become very small, indicating convergence. Let me give you a little bit more intuition behind what we're doing. So the main idea is that while well, solving for equations or setting the gradient to zero is in general very difficult, but it's easy for quadratic functions. So what we'll do is if we have a complicated function, we'll just approximate it locally with a quadratic function and minimize that. So here's my function and let's say that I am at this point wt. So this is the value of f at wt. And now what we want is to essentially go towards the minimum. But the problem is that I don't know in which direction the minimum is. One thing I could do is I could do some local approximation to the function. And the simplest approximation would be with a linear function. Another way to think about what we will be doing is that we are trying to find a function that is always an upper bound of our f and then we'll minimize that function. And if we minimize that function, we know that we're making progress. And here is the quadratic function. We'll call it g of t. We are actually moving to the minimum of that quadratic function, which will be our wt plus one. Now the question is, how do we get this quadratic function g of t? The tangent line to our function is given by the following equation, f of wt, plus the derivative of f at wt, more generally the gradient, times u minus wt, which represents the displacement. And of course, this is for any u. So this is the equation of that line. But instead of that line, we want to find a function that touches my function at the point wt. So what we want is gt of wt is equal to f of wt. And we want that gt is always greater than or equal to f of u for all u. And how we are going to achieve this exactly? Well, we will actually go back to the line. And we're going to add something to the equation of that line, which is the quadratic function itself. 
More specifically, this part that I added is the second order term that controls how much the approximation bends or curves. This constant L is the Lipschitz constant for the gradient of F, which bounds how much the gradient can change between different points. L is essentially a measure of the smoothness of the function F, specifically how quickly its gradient changes. L controls how much penalty is applied for moving away from WT to U. A larger L means that the function changes more rapidly or that it is less smooth, while a smaller L means that the function is smoother. This is how the complete quadratic approximation looks. At this point, our goal is to minimize this function GT of U, because minimizing this upper bound gives us a better idea of where to move in our next gradient descent step. The minimum of GT of U will give us our next iterate, WT plus one. So the next step in our algorithm is to find the minimum of GT of U. And to do that, we can take the derivative of GT of U with respect to U, set it equal to zero and solve for u. So let's go ahead and compute that. So the derivative of the first term is zero because it is a constant with respect to u. The second term gives us f prime of wt and the third term gives us l times u minus wt. And now we can solve for u. This gives us the update rule for our next iterate, wt plus 1. And this is exactly how gradient descent with a quadratic upper bound works. By minimizing this quadratic approximation, we're essentially taking a step in the direction of the negative gradient, scaled by 1 over l which controls how large our step is based on the smoothness of the function. So in summary, we start at wt, build a quadratic approximation to f at that point, then minimize the approximation to find wt plus 1. Repeating this process iteratively brings us closer and closer to the minimum of f.